So this is Mrs. Robertson, and today we are going to complete our project, breaking up the bakery, um, and we're going to go to the page that has splitting the snacks. So we're going to do these problems, and after this page we're going to go to the robot takeover, and then we'll talk about what you still have to do before you turn your project in. <clears throat> Here we go. It says, many of your customers like to share their purchases. Help them figure out how to divvy, that means another word for split up, their snacks in these word problems. Okay, so, do I have a volunteer to read the first one? Carrington. Okay, three-fourths of the 24. Of means to multiply. So in this problem, you're going to take three-fourths times 24, and you're going to put it over 1. All right, write that down. You have to show how to get your answer. Would you close the door for me, please? I am going to simplify before I multiply. 4 will divide 4 once. And 4 divides 24 how many times? 6. 3 times 6 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. The answer, 18 pumpkin pies. Any questions on how to do that problem? All right, let's go on to the next one, the one with the chocolate chip cookie. Do I have a volunteer to read this problem? Owen? What are we going to do for this one? Multiply. Two ninths times 18. I'm going to put it over a 1 since we're multiplying fractions. Can I simplify before I multiply on this one? Yes. yes. 9 divides 9 once. 9 divides 18 two times. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 people. Any questions? Very nice job, kids. Let's go on to the next problem. Do I have a volunteer to read that problem? Heidi? Um, the robots are powered on coffee alone. They use two bags. Oh, we're on splitting the snacks. Ooh, so what fraction did not make a free order? Four fifths. Four fifths, very good. So we're going to have four fifths of 25. <coughs> did not pre-order, okay? Four, that's called a complement. The complement to one-fifth is four-fifths because one-fifth plus four-fifths makes a whole. So once again, simplify before you multiply. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 will divide 25 5 times. And you get 20 over 1, or the answer, 20 people. Are there any questions on that one? You're doing a lovely job. Let's go on to the next problem. Do I have a volunteer to read that problem? Sanchez? Yeah, Okay, that one is tricky. It says there are 16 friends sharing four cupcakes. If they divide the cupcakes evenly so that they each get four pieces of a cupcake, how many pieces do they need to cut each cupcake into? The answer is 16 pieces. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that one because um, if you draw the cup, no one's going to cut a cupcake into 16 pieces. It's just sort of a silly. What will you have? You will have crumbs. To me, it's like how many crumbs can you eat if you're going to cut one cupcake up into 16 pieces? Um, 
because if you do that, then each person will get four pieces. Because there are four cupcakes, you cut each cupcake into 16 pieces, 16 people. They each get one piece from each cupcake. So that's how you would do that one. Let's go on to one that's a little bit better. I have two Sophias. One of my Sophias, or both of you can read this problem. There's only one Sophia. The other Sophia. Amos and Warner. I'm not a Sophia. That's Sophie. Sophie. Oh, okay. Well, my only Sophia. I read it. Um, yes. Sophia brought a large piece in and Okay, so if her friends eat two-thirds, what fraction of the cake is left? One-third. One so we're going to take one-third times 15 because the whole cake was cut up into 15 slices, right? We multiply 15 divided by 3 equals 5. How many slices or pieces of cake are left? Five pieces. That's a nice amount to have left over. You can still have birthday cake on the next day. Um, Sophie, tell me about the next one. Okay, how many are in a dozen? Twelve. So let's put twelve there. Um, shared one dozen. Two six of them have nuts. How many brownies did... Dad not eat because they had nuts. Well, you're just going to take 2, 6 times 12, right? So 12 over 1 times 2 over 6. Simplify it before you multiply. 6 divide 6. And 6 will divide 12 two times. So how many brownies did Dad not eat? Four. four. There are four brownies that have nuts. Any questions? You're doing a great job. Let's go on to the next problem. Uh, do I have a volunteer to read this one? Owen. Three quarters of the bag of 20 cookies burned with the predominantly pronounced mother. How many cookies burned? Oh, three fourths times 20. What a waste of good cookies. Sometimes I will eat burnt cookies. Have any of you ever ate burnt cookies? I don't mind. It depends. If they're not too badly burnt, they sort of have a crispy taste. Four goes into four once. How many cookies? Fifteen cookies are burnt. Okay, we have fifteen toasty cookies. Any questions? You kids are doing a nice job on this. Let's do the next one about Grandma and her apple pie. Devin, tell me about Grandma's pie. Okay, so we're going to have one-fifth times ten, right? The pie is cut into ten pieces, so that's ten over one times one-fifth. That equals ten-fifths. I could have simplified before I multiplied, but I didn't. Two pieces. Does everyone have all eight of these answers? Great. Let's go on to the next one. The only one I thought that really was... Ridiculous was this one about the cupcakes, cutting them up into 16 pieces. All the others I thought were pretty good. Now we're going to talk about the robot takeover. Oh, business is booming. And your store is much too busy for you to keep up with on your own. So what do you do? You hire some robots to come and help you out. For the most part, your new robots are extremely helpful. But... They sometimes get a little carried away and make mistakes. Let's see here. Solve the problems below. Write a multiplication equation to check your work. Okay, so we'll see if we have time to get our multiplication equations to check our work or not on these. Let's go on to the first problem. Do I have a volunteer to read this problem? Yes. Okay, so this is one-fifth 
divided by how many measuring cups? Two. So, one-fifth divided by two. Well, we're dividing with fractions. We're going to keep, change, flip. That's the same thing as one-fifth divided by two over one, right? So I have to change this to a multiplication problem. Keep, change, flip. What's the answer? One-tenth of a gallon. And let's write the word G-A-L for gallon. We'll abbreviate it. Any questions? Okay, who would like to read the next one? All right. <coughs> Owen, go ahead. You like to read. Okay. On the robot's first day, they accurately triple the size of a normal cake. By the end of the day, there were still three fourths of the cake left. The staff split it among six workers. How much did each person do? Okay. How much of the cake is left? three-fourths, and we're going to split it, or in other words, when you split, you divide. We're going to divide it by what? Okay. When you have fractions and you divide, I'm just going to rewrite that as 6 over 1. You're going to do keep, change, and flip. Did everyone see what I have there? So you're going to end up with three-fourths times one-sixth. Simplify before you multiply. And did you get one-eighth of a cup? Yes. Very good. Let's go on to the next problem. Any other readers for these? All right, Miss Sanchez. Okay, here we have one-fourth divided by two. So that'll be one-fourth divided by two over one. And then when I do my um, keep, change, flip, what do you get? One-eighth of a day. Now, sometimes I have kids, they might have put 0.25 divided by 2, and 1 eighth of a day, 1 divided by 8, will give you the answer of 0.125 of a day. Or if you had the decimal, 1 eighth of a day, or 0.125 of a day. Most of you are going to have 1 eighth of a day. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, I volunteer to read this one. Carrington. Okay, so we're going to take this half a cup, and how many pies are they going to split that half a cup into? How many pies did it say? Three. So one half divided by three, which means one half divided by three over one. Now we change it to one half times one third. And the answer is one-sixth of a cup. Any questions? Heidi, would you like to do the next one? All right. So we have one-third... How many robots are they hiring? Four. four. One third divided by four. So that'll be one third divided by four over one, which means our multiplication, one third times one 
fourth equals one twelfth of the work. Any questions? You're all showing your work on these, aren't you? And if you didn't have it right, make sure you fix it. Okay, let's do the last problem here. I have a volunteer to read this. Um, Sanchez. Okay, so let's read this one carefully. Okay, so on this you have one half divided by three, so that will be one half divided by three over one. So one half times one third equals one sixth of a pound. How much chocolate goes into each container? A sixth of a pound. Any questions on that? Okay. Now, for the very last part of your project, before you can turn it in, on a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be a full piece of paper, you choose one of these things on the back and turn it in. You can choose, create a menu for your bakery instead of using cents. Use only fractions as prices. That one's probably not one you want to do. It's going to take longer. But if you want to, you can. I just don't see that one being very practical. Create a new set of measuring cups using non-traditional measurements. Draw them and label them. Then explain your reasoning for your new measurements. If you are a creative person and you want to change the measurement system, this is for you. That would bother me to do that because I'm so used to the traditional ones. But maybe you want them all to be like um, fractions of 10, you know, 1 tenth, 1 twentieth, so on. The next possible, if you kept all of your prices the same but decided to cut, piece, cut pie slices smaller and make the same size batches of brownies but cut them into 24 pieces instead of 16 pieces, would you make more or less money than before? That one's a pretty good one. In fact, they do this all the time. If you've noticed how your candy bars might not be as big as they used to be, or when you buy certain things, I like this one a lot. That's a good possibility. And then the other one that I think a lot of kids will end up doing is this last one. Now that you have robots to help you, you have decided to open your shop to school tours. Explain how you would make it an academic learning experience. Now, it doesn't have to only be about math, but on this one, you would need to write three sentences, and you would get your full credit. All right, kids, that is what you will need to do. We'll have time to do that in class tomorrow, and that will be it for your sixth grade math curriculum year. And I think it's time to go. Have a great day.